so guys welcome back to my channel so guys about the election happening in Kanu state we all know how the judiciary and everything about INEC and the federal government are so corrupt when i mean like these guys are corrupt and it is happening that the Kano state high court has directed the INEC to proceed the conduct of the local government election but guess what the high court uh, the federal high court are saying that they should not proceed with the election happening on saturday that is today you can see that there is no there is no understanding in the judiciary and they are so so confused yes guys they are so confused there is no unity there is no you find out that they just do things anyhow and you find out that it costs a lot we remember what happened in the last election in the last uh, go, um, presidential election you saw how everything went read confusion even the man he was not even saying something reasonable to try and prove his point of because people were asking questions like why did our, uh, our vote not count why did our vote not count you see that there is total and like this total confusion in that judiciary because they don't know what they are doing so guys just watch this video and see what this lawyer has to say when we keep looking at these issues keep coming up and appearing mm -hmm. to be sounding like broken record mm -hmm. I, th I think it's time to actually call out the judiciary directly as um, being in this case the author of confusion now right. politicians will always be who they are in the quest to, for, for control of political power, they are bound to carry on some form of SSS and all that. <laughs> and then the role of the judiciary is actually to ensure that their conflicts and, uh, you know, all sort of confusion are resolved. But in this case, we have seen too many times uh, as news analysts, as news watchers, and then as even participants in the whole process, realizing that the, 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 it's this issue of uh, you know judicial misadventure is becoming you know unbearable and so in, the, in this particular case we can't imagine that democracy as we have it as, as we presently practiced in the last uh, you, you know uh, you know decade has actually been bedeviled by these forms of uncertainties flowing from the judiciary this case being in point and to think that this is often what we deprecate all the time that they and and i have and i must commend Ariwala because he did make attempts uh, to, to, in his in his twilight uh, in office mm. when he set up a committee to, to be headed by uh, former chief justice of nigeria uh, uh water and okay for to to bring up you know models on how to avoid you know these forms of conflict of uh, uh, conflicting judgments yeah. it's unfortunate that nothing came out from that uh, committee I, I i didn't hear it was dissolved but i also didn't hear that it came out with any form of work what you must appreciate is that this is as these are constitutional issues considering in the sense that once any court makes an order it must be enforced by any person any authority or person in the federal republic of nigeria and i'm speaking specifically to section 287 of the constitution in that case the why would you know that there is a subsisting court order on a subject matter, however wrong it is, then you go and make a direct conflicting order to that particular judgment or order? You know, it's just an invitation to confusion. But we must not forget one personality. And I've attempted to actually bring him up. And I'm not talking about the, the Attorney General of the Federation. He is not... The, he, he may be a minister of government. He, do, he doesn't have to be a minister of, uh, you, you know, of uh, justice, but he is attorney general of the federation, the chief law officer. That's how the Supreme Court describes him. So there are times, oftentimes like this, that that personality should come and say, this is what the law is, and this is what we should enforce, and this is what we should not enforce. We can't keep subjecting our judiciary to this mockery by these persons who operate as judges with all sorts of ulterior motives and who can often be compromised by either pressure or one thing or the other? Well, is there any form of legality? Because I think you've just brought up uh, something that uh, a lot of people haven't thought of. The chief legal officer superintends, uh, but his comments on this, uh, how forceful uh, will that be, knowing full well that uh, we're talking about uh, uh, court's uh, judgment? Look, I think we have underutilized and underestimated the powers of the personality of the Attorney General of the Federation. You know, because we're talking about a chief law officer. Those are not my words. Those are the words of the Constitution. Meaning that instead of subjecting I mean, judicial decisions and determinations to debates and often news analysis, as we often do here, the personality of the, uh, the Attorney General oftentimes should be the one pointing out that this is what the law is at every material time in, in this country. And 
if there is any conflict to what he's saying, go to court. And when the court has so said, he has a mandate in pursuant to section 287 and uh, particularly to his massive powers under section 150 and 174 to not say this is the direction. And look, I haven't seen the Attorney General make such kind of you know direct and strong pronouncement or position taking positions whether in Canon State or in River State crisis, whether it has to do with the, uh, the the members of the House of Assembly, or even in the case of Kano with regards to the, the, the who should be the proper Emir in Kano. Right. Now, don't forget that he's not the Attorney General of APC. He's not the Attorney General of Nigeria, as we speak. He's the Attorney General of the Federation, which means every matter of law, whether it has to do with a local government that has assumed some measure of national interest, is should be of much importance to him that he cannot turn a blind eye to. This is a good example of where judges have not disregarded that the sanctity of the powers that they exercise. In this case, from Kano, which is becoming very, very embarrassing. We have a new Chief Justice, uh, CJN, who in her inaugural speech actually pointed out that some of these excesses will be, you know, I mean, uh, zero tolerated. Does she have any role here? What should the CJN be doing right now to ensure that, you know, these excesses are checked? And, we, we, I mean, you have talked about reforms, the need for judicial reforms. Where do we need to start these reforms from? These, these problems this. are not new. Right. And the current Chief Justice of Nigeria has been part of the system, has been a Justice of the Supreme Court, and actually well vast and very much acquainted with these problems. Mm -hmm. One thing, I, we also, I, I'll talk about underestimating the powers of the Attorney General. We should not overestimate the powers of the Chief Justice of Nigeria because wow. she is just one, one person, you know, exercising judicial powers, even though she heads many uh, ju judicial agencies and, uh, uh, and bodies mm -hmm. that are, can actually make impact. But these are constitutional issues. Right. For us to make any lasting and fundamental judicial, I mean, judicial reforms, it has to come from the National Assembly. Imagine where, when we deal with cases that have to do with, uh, with, with delays, you know, on due delays that actually have denied and defeated justice in this country. Mm -hmm. In that, it, the National Assembly only needed to make up its mind in its area of, of interest that is, it has to do with uh, political cases and it simply set limits. So the average Nigerian has, I mean, the average Nigerian, I hate to say this, has lost a major, is, a, you know, is, is a large measure of confidence in Nigerian judiciary. And for us to restore that, con uh, that confidence, mm -hmm. it has to come from actually making you know, no, law, law reform first, you know, right. we have to have some amendment. You have to amend the constitution. For example, look at section 190, 194 of the constitution, I mean 294 of the constitution, where, you know, which mandates the judges to write in long hand, I mean, in terms of giving reasons for, I mean, in the way they present their judgment. Mm. That is a clog in itself. It causes some forms of delay. And then look at the chickenaries and the political process, because it's about politics, law, and justice. The political processes and the, 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 the cheap, you know, the tactics that have been adopted by other senior lawyers or scrupulous lawyers to delay cases. So we are very much aware of all the problems. However, it is that strength of resolve on the part of those who really govern the system, particularly the National Assembly, the State President and the Speaker of the House of uh, Representatives, yeah. going after, I mean, having a coalition with other speakers and with governors to say, look, we can have a better system. The way they did it for themselves with regards to electoral matters, they can do it in other issues too. You it's know, a matter of constitutional you, amendment. You, you know, sadly, yeah. uh, let's talk about political influence because everyone you've just named, somehow uh, the members of a political party and uh, what we smell here seem to be some kind of political influence leading up to such uh, conflicting uh, judgments or orders. Uh, how best do you think that these reforms can actually be activated without these political actors also interfering? You know, because they are beneficiaries of the current dysfunctionality that we have mm. in this country, it's going to be very difficult for us to have the reforms. These reforms that we're calling for have been called for more than 10 years ago. They've been I mean, professors and we have National Judicial Institute and conferences all over the world, all over this country being held by uh, the, the foreign, uh, you know, supported uh, conferences and all sort of uh, interventions. They know the right thing to do, but those who benefit from it would are the ones who actually have the responsibility of doing it, and they don't want to do it. They did it for themselves with regards to, you know, giving time limits for election cases, but the same way they can do it with regards to giving the sense of confidence, a sense of, you know, a, 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 you know, a 
the judicial system that is ready to actually provide justice for the Nigerian people. As we speak now, the judiciary has a problem. And our country is headed for a very terrible direction. Direction, And I hate to say it because the goal of the judiciary is nothing else but to resolve conflicts because they are bound to come. Because you have a lot of rascals who run, the who run in the political terrain. It is the responsibility of the judges in this course to now railroad them on the path of law, legality, and democracy. But when you now see those who are supposed to who are supposed to guard the system because they are there quiet. They are there. You know, there is no judge in these matters, whether in Kano River State or elsewhere, that has less than 20 years' experience of the practice of law. Now, to think that these persons will not apply their knowledge of law to subverting the system, then you must realize that we are having, we are faced with a political emergency. Now, right. it's a very serious matter. But what it calls for is some truth, on the, especially on the part of the president, on the part of the CGN, on the part of uh, Akpabio and, uh, the, um, and the speaker, to say, look, please, we can save this system. We can save this democracy. Absolutely. Let us try a bit. But well, if we continue like this, I, I, I'm afraid we might just have some form of implosion. Guys, you can see what is actually going on in our judiciary. You find out that they don't even keep to law. They don't follow the normal procedure of the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. You find out that they, they do a lot of things against the rule of law. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'll put it down. Please do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like this video. And I'll see you guys in my next video.